Welcome to Starfleet Boy. Audience, please attend carefully. There are lots of spoilers for Star Trek in general. We are back on another exciting episode of Starfleet Boy where we have a casual and informal conversation about Star Trek tonight, 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 tonight. I don't know the rest of the words to that song, but it's Phil Collins. <laughs> yes, the great Phil Collins. <laughs> what are the rest of the words to that song? Did you see what we I have did to there? Call I Phil brought Collins. Phil Collins into the episode called Genesis. Oh my god, that was genius, sir. You're right. Come on. <laughs> that was genius. That was genius. <laughs> I knew you would enjoy that if you knew what it was going on. <laughs> there we go. Genesis. You know they they do you know they, they were talking about going on tour again before this COVID nineteen thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which could have which could now be a virtual tour. Which I'd be happy <laughs> happy to do. This episode, oddly enough, is very appropriate for the times we're living in, except in an extreme sci-fi uh, way. But it does it does actually deal with how these things can just the, like. Yeah, you're <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's yes. it's a crazy, crazy episode because that that's the thing yes. that I thought of like the whole time. Um, I'd forgotten that it's a Barkley episode too. <laughs> Which is really in a weird funny. way. In a weird way. No, yeah. but he's the he's like the he's the bookends. They bookend with him. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Um, no, it's a it's a it's. I don't I'm know if it's a great episode. It. <laughs> I don't know if it was always a great episode, but it's a great episode now. <laughs> no, I, I think it was always going to be a great episode. I think it was always going to be a great episode. I, do you have a uh, do you have a summary prepared, Doc? <laughs> Who, me? No. Yeah, or should I should I give it? I think you should give it. All right. I actually took notes. Oh, good, <laughs> so, good. Let me pull up my notes. Excellent, All right. so, excellent, excellent. Genesis, Genesis, Genesis allowed is not. Planet it's forbidden. Virus. <laughs> it's virus forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually named after him. It's called Barclay's protomorphosis syndrome. Yeah. He's, he was very content with, this uh, is, with, with that. <laughs> I thought his this reaction a, at the end was great. This is an episode that reminds me a little bit of the um, uh, masks f like structure in the sense that we start out with that really crazy scene in Sick Bay where you have you have Riker, you have yeah. uh, who else is in there? Riker Barkley. Data and Spot and Nurse Ogawa are all having an emergency of some sort, and Dr. Crusher's handling it like a boss. She is she so... Is. The, yeah. That whole scene's just really fun, and what it, but, but it doesn't... It's a cool scene, but the episode, it's another way to distract you into thinking that this is going to be another mundane episode, and then it becomes this, like, crazy... <laughs> crazy, crazy. By the way, she's the boss Situation. in more than one way. Because she's also the director. It's her only time directing on Star Trek The Next Generation. There you go. And what an episode and, it is. And what an episode to, to, to direct. Anyways, that scene alone is 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 priceless. Um, wait, I didn't mention. I feel so bad that you mentioned it. Gates McFadden's going to watch it. So be like, Starfleet Boy would didn't mention that I was the director. It was the doctor. You took that away from me, doctor. Thanks. <laughs> Beat you to it. <laughs> you did. It was in my notes. <laughs> it was in my notes. It just comes later. <laughs> it was in my notes, I swear. Mm. I just felt it. I felt the sad. I was like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's not sad because you're my partner in crime, so it's okay. We're the same. <laughs> We're the same. I'm not eating anything on this episode. But <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so so, anyways, you you have all that craziness going on, and then Barkley is being a uh, what we would call is having uh, an episode of of massive health anxiety. We would call it today, but it, but he refers to it as, or I don't think they say it, but you know he's basically a hypochondriac so he's going nuts he's like my levels my this my that and then finally dr crusher has to be like yeah you have another 80 years uh to go you're Mm -hmm. that's the shape you're in according to all these um all these tests i've done on you when you're insisting you're dying of some flu or some crazy thing so he's like okay he's relieved but he's like but she says you are in fact fighting off this flu. I forget what it's called. The did you write it down? Torellian or something? No, I don't write it down. Flu. That's what it was. It was the Torellian flu or something like that. And so she's like, but we have this like uh, this this anti uh, this like sort of basically uh, antibodies that we can inject in you that'll help you fight this off. But because he was genetically different, because he didn't have the gene to fight off the Torellian flu. The antibodies interact with his like crazy body chemistry, and they mutate into this crazy uh, <laughs> protomorphosis syndrome, which causes you to basically de-evolve into <laughs> some life form that that you have like genes you know in common with. That's that's a, a lesser. <laughs> Are you laughing at my summary? Yes. It's making you. Laugh. No, I'm laughing at the episode. <laughs> Oh, good. It's reminding you. I, I, but my yes. summary is reminding you of it. That's good. Yes. Anyway, so uh, everyone de-evolves into something. Riker uh, de-evolves into, like, basically the caveman lawyer from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> oh, uh, that's a great reference. That's <laughs> the late Phil Hartman's I'm, one of his best, uh, yes. best skits. I'm just a simple sa- caveman doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's oh, see. man, Worf, I love those. Worf devolves into basically a giant venomous uh, crab? Well, actually, I have a, a photograph here, and he kind of looks like the Predator. Uh, let me, what? Let me, let me, let me hold it up oh, close. Oh, what? That's not what I saw on screen. Can you see it well? Yeah, but I don't remember that kind of clarity. Well, no, and, and that's a credit to, to the wonderful lighting. In this episode, which which uh, I like you know, that you didn't really see what he looked like, but is that what yeah. the makeup was? Hmm. Was that the makeup though? That w- makeup yeah, thing? that's the makeup. Oh. Yeah, yeah. This is wow. a whole this is a whole piece on on Crusher. The doctor turns director. She and dances and she directs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, anyways, Worf turns into this, like, terrible thing. And I actually wrote this note, Doctor, and it might antagonize you, but I wrote, Jurati is under severe duress, and people complain, where's justice for Jurati? Like, that's like a movement, right? Like, that she needs to turn herself in. Like, why is she forgiven for killing Maddox? Oh, I know exactly where you're going with this. Yeah. Worf slaughters I know exactly where you're going with this. Worf slaughters And I thought of that too. Yes. And and pulls the spinal column from out out from like predator style actually now that you mentioned Exactly. Yes. And it's never even talked about. It's just all water under the bridge. (laughs) It's like You know, I I I imagine uh, have you ever have you ever seen Jimmy Fallon's uh, the when he does a note, the thank you notes? And he goes, uh, you know, I'm imagining Picard writing the 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 condolence letter <laughs> to all those people murdered by Worf. It's insane. <laughs> to that it's music, insane. I don't know why it is insane. All That's the people, what ha- surely, yeah, surely Jean Luc had to write those letters. How does Picard write that letter? Uh, Mrs. Merriweather, I am so sorry to report that your daughter was killed in the line of duty. 
She was very valuable to this crew, and her memory will always be cherished. For the full log, you may reference Starfleet uh, Section 0014776 uh, under the Public Information Act of oh my Lord. 2217. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> How exactly did my daughter die, Jean-Luc? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I'm just wondering. Don't like, worry, Wolf. <laughs> I took care of it for you, Wolf. Don't worry. There will not be an inquest. You were not in your right mind, Wolf. <laughs> you, he doesn't have a demerit on on his on his record for this, right? What can you do, though? It's true. He's right in this situation. Like Wolf is de-evolved. <laughs> so that just absolves you <laughs> because you've been you've it, de-evolved, right? It should. I'm sure but Riker was trying to kill Livingston the fish. He was trying to kill. What if he had succeeded in killing Livingston? <laughs> what, if, what if that had happened? <laughs> no justice for Livingston. No. Just, no. Justice for Maddox. Justice. For justice for justice. Maddox, but not for Livingston. <laughs> But not for Livingston. Is that how it is done? Wow, we really oh, went wow. to... I knew you needed the laugh, but I didn't know you needed it that much, Doctor. I'm so glad. That wow. <laughs> no, but I, I thought I thought that as well as I watched the episode. I'd forgotten that part. I mean, they... I know we're, we're skipping way ahead in the summary, <laughs> but true, Picard and true. Data just find the incident. He's just completely... You know, and and I I, I think and I, I'm jumping ahead, but I all that would have been fine. I would have been fine with it. It's just that you get hit with those very pat, you know, quick next generation happy endings. You know, where you're kind of like, what? Like you've just it, it's not yeah. just the crew. So how the, the Enterprise was trashed. Did you see the the console? The condition well, of it? The ship was trashed. Well, no. It was found. Yeah. You know, I mean, come we on. Know, the next episode could be a week later or two weeks. It doesn't take that long to clean up the Enterprise. No, no. You know, the but computer with, helps you. Like, within the episode itself, it's like, oh, it's everything's like back to normal. It. Everything's well, great. it's drifting. I love it's, the fact that it's adrift. Yeah. They find it's actually kind of a really great uh, Star Trek episode from one perspective because um, basically like in the naked it's doing this thing it's like upside right. down like this and right. hold on I think I can recreate do you have a shuttlecraft I might do hold on here it is can, can you recreate the there we go <laughs> here we go my oh, the Enterprise. scale is off but, <laughs> but yes. here we go here we go oh wow so there's this thing happening right okay. here okay and, and, and then it was rotating while it was happening. And Picard so was doing it manually. Did he manually, not say so he was going to yeah, fly her really manually? Skipped it. This, this episode... Okay. we got to finish the summary just <laughs> real All quick. Right. I'll, I'll go through it real quick. Go for it. So there's signs throughout that everyone's experiencing some kind of, like, you know, malady. And it starts out really subtle, but, but like entertaining because like Barkley is like full of energy and Riker's losing right. concentration and Jordy's feeling you know like uh, hot or something I forget there's all kinds of different ways it's manifesting in everyone and you're like uh oh it's going to be another naked you, you're like this is going to be like another naked now because naked now. Right, na yeah. we've had you know viruses have plagued the Enterprise many times it's, it's not their first pandemic yeah. <laughs> it's not their That's first for sure. mini mini pandemic on their on their ship there but um but this one actually they succumb to everyone gets transformed basically and poor crusher has to be put in stasis because Worf vomits on her directly at her face and it's i have to say if if that was the writers or if gates mcfadden was like i need a way way to step out so i can direct that was what it brilliant is. it was really yeah. brilliant because it was yeah. like it was like you're like horrified, and they even say like, "Oh my God, Doctor Crusher is going to need reconstructive surgery." It's like amazing you know? reconstructive surgery because if yes. I'm not mistaken, she identifies those as acid. Acid. She says so, ve so venomous she like sacks or so, venom sacks, basically. But it is acidic, obviously, because it burns. So her face yeah. was like burnt, was like melting. <laughs> 
and they just were able to reconstruct. Like, there's I nothing, mean, I mean, wow. I mean, they're able to transform you from a human into a Romulan. Romulan, I know, but you know, this is like I, serious. This, I'm like, wow. I'm very. I, think I was very not impressed. Any, I don't think it's any difference. I, I think though that Doctor Crusher will probably be like, my nose is off, or like, you know, they didn't quite get the eyebrow right, or something. You know, like there'll be like things that only she. Only she is, will. But yeah, know, yeah. But to us, we we yeah, it is it is a marvel of technology. It's a good good footnote there but um but anyways in in typical star trek fashion you know thank goodness in the nick of time that uh that picard and data come back when they do because it gives data enough time to save the day by identifying through really roundabout subplot which was cool too because i felt very emotional about it was the spot baby Oh yeah, the Spot kitten thing. Basically, Spot has kittens. The kittens are not transformed. Spot's an iguana, by the way, um, <laughs> but the kittens are not transformed, and so he figures out that something about the amniotic fluid in in um, a mother protects the the offspring from from the pathogen. Uh, so he's able to use Nurse Ogawa, who's in an impressive. Uh, like uh, also devolved to like what I imagine um, like Australopithecus or one of those guys you know like that kind of like proto-human or human descendant you know direct human descendant Um, and it was really cool I loved the I loved her she reminded me of like I don't know like um, Planet of the Apes but like more animal like not not quite as uh not quite as like um yeah more animal like it was right. very good makeup that scene was i think that if i don't know how it affected me when i first saw it i can't remember but this time i was very impressed and noticed how good that scene was in terms of like the performance as well as the makeup and everything it was just really i thought it was a really good good moment well, a, a so shout, was, yeah, a shout out to Michael Westmore, who who yes. was who was the he's always the he is Behind the makeup it. right. He's always the makeup effects person on right. on Next Generation, but that this was uh, a tour de force, remember, right? Do you remember? Well, yeah, not not to mention all the other devolving, like Barclays was cool. He turned into a spider, basically. Uh, did we see oh Troy this is the funniest thing the, there's another plot going on which you know to give season 7 it's credit like we definitely see that they're like a week or two into their relationship they've gotten comfortable like you know what I mean there is like a progression from the previous episode where they decide to go steady to this episode where they're having dinner together in this like really awkward fashion but then Worf takes a bite out of her, and she grows gills and becomes like a fish person. An it's amphibian, crazy all the yeah. different like amph- possible mutations. In fact, Picard would have mutated back into like into either a lemur. I think he said it was a lemur. Yeah, Data says pygmy, it's a lemur. Oh, or a pygmy marmoset. He says either a lemur or a pygmy marmoset. So could you imagine? If they couldn't cure, Picard would have turned into a freaking pygmy marmoset. It was so crazy how this disease works. Uh, but I thought I thought it was very well seriously done. Like I didn't think it was over the top. Even Worf, who was had the risk of being over the top, I actually felt like the terror of being chased by this Klingon crustacean, you know, predator thing. And I thought like eventually he would kill every everyone on the ship. Yeah. Like eventually he if he wasn't you know, he is the alpha what do you call that? The, alpha male, yeah. The, no, the but the the alpha species or the alpha predator, you know. Right. The, uh, apex predator. Sorry. He is the apex predator on the ship. I didn't see a dragon. I didn't see any well, who knows what the Andorian crew members would evolve and de evolve into or the Vulcan crew members, but certainly Worf was the most uh, crazy, formidable thing. But anyways, Data finds the the cure, synthesizes it, and then spreads it through aerosol throughout the uh, ship, and then everyone re-evolves back into themselves, and mm-hmm. it's all jokes in, in the end, and I loved it. It was a very, very good episode. Yeah, I, 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 I loved it. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of, of Cronenberg, 
and you know kind of his 80s body horror movies so uh this oh yeah you know um like i barkley's transformation into a spider reminded me a lot of the fly uh you know an insect like creature and uh that's I, right I, yeah and um i was reading here in the in the magazine and they have an interview with with gates mcfadden from the time and uh she write she um she says that um this is, I'm quoting her in, in the magazine. I think in a way it probably would have been best as a two-part episode so you would have had time to develop some of the things. It was a very long script to begin with and I felt there were a lot of abrupt things that had to happen because it was one hour. It's one of those things that until you start filming and getting dailies, you don't know how long this stuff is shooting. A lot of my favorite things, transitional shots, shots that set a mood got cut but those are the parameters you're given as a director i learned an awful lot working on it i worked very closely with daryl baskin on the editing and that was a terrific experience and that's what's fun about doing an episodic piece you're going in to do it in seven days seven days S that that's the schedule that this show was that's on. Crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy when you think about it. Seven days. And it's going to be cut I would, together. I would like to know... I would like to know why Gates McFadden didn't direct anything else. She was great at it. Um... Sorry, go on. And you can keep... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, well, it says here in the beginning um, that it was... Uh, they seem to be. Da, 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 da. Well, it says here that Mc, uh, McFadden had little choice of stories, however, having locked herself into a time slot in the production schedule far in advance. Fortunately, Genesis not only appealed to her sense of the macabre, but was a, a perfect stylistic match to her background in dance, choreography, and martial arts. And I'm, this is McFadden speaking. Awesome. I must say I was excited at the prospect of doing something spooky, said McFadden. I love the imaginative aspect of the show. Um, so, I mean, I, 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 I don't how, know. I love how folks in the industry just call it an episode, The Show. It's like a good... The you know, Show. It's like a I love that. Because yeah. <laughs> it is The yeah. Show. It's all The sh It's The Show, man. There's it's no the show. business like show right. business. There's no business. I no. <laughs> uh, I I think yeah. I I would love to know. Uh, I don't I don't know what the answer is, but I think uh, it's not too late. I think Gates McFadden should be given uh, the mantle of director on. Uh, and if she wants it, she may she may be like, I'm done with directing. I hate it. But if she wants it, I'd love to see her direct Picard season two. I would be very pleased with that. And Lavar Burton, by the way. All the directors of Star Trek should be allowed to direct Star Trek. <laughs> well, she I know she does a lot of stage work right now and I think mm -hmm. she uh but she, you know she did work on Dark Crystal. Uh she was uh she worked me in behind the scenes on the Dark Crystal. That was Labyrinth, right? Wasn't it she was the director think it was of choreographer the choreographer Labyrinth? I thought it was she the, Dark the Dark Crystal. Crystal. Yeah, I thought it was the Dark Crystal. She has a she does she's using a different name though. Because remember, she's not. Um, she sometimes is Cheryl McFadden. I think you're right about that. Gates McFadden is very mysterious. I used to think she was twins. Do you remember? <laughs> I don't. Re I remember, but I don't remember why you thought that. I didn't know that people could use different names, and I thought that when I saw Cheryl McFadden, <laughs> that it was like Gates McFadden's. Sister, oh, and that they okay. had to I have see. been twins. I, I made a, I, I made an assumption that they had to have been twins because they. Oh, looked, okay. I was like, Cheryl McFadden looks just like Gates McFadden. Like, why do they look the same? Oh, I get it. Twins. <laughs> so I, like, I get it. That's true. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's yeah. I, I I can see that. Uh the but uh, getting back to the episode, uh, I I thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> I uh, I really uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed the the structure of this of the story 
that we saw. I like the way that, you know, as you said, we, we had quite a bit of, um, I guess you can say, the the material that kind of lulls you into, oh, this is going to be another one of those episodes. Uh, Worf is testing uh, a torpedo. Oh, yeah. Which I sounds feel, really mundane. Mention, and But it's and the reason... It works well because, A, it it's does. Reason, it ends up being the reason Picard and Data... And that's actually delightful. There's, You know what? There's a lot of, like, cool... This is Character you know, moments, yeah. This is the credit I kind of have to give to every cast member who's ever directed, and it's that there is always a lot of personal but very important... There are a lot of details that I don't think any anyone even except could pull off as well as they do. Mm-hmm. It can yeah. be written, but it wouldn't have... It might have been written, but it, I don't think it would be pulled... Because they know... Like, at this point, at, at Season 7, they're all... Like, I like to say, they're all masters at their character. Like, yeah. they are they are the final word, in a sense. Because writers come and writers go, you know, except for a few staff writers that go through the whole series. But, like, for the most part, you have rotating writers, so not every writer is going to, like, know... To, to like know exactly you know like Patrick Stewart might change a line because he's like oh well Picard wouldn't say it like that you know <laughs> so, right right I think that's no, but happening the, I don't yeah. know yeah and I, I like I like uh, the the dynamics in this episode were very interesting to me because you well for one thing you had you had nurse um, uh, oh, gosh, Ogawa. What's, Ogawa kind of stepping up because of course Crusher and is out of the picture they, they also mentioned Dr. Solara, so she's still They do, around. yes. Yeah, she's, she's somewhere, we just never see her. <laughs> I know. I know. So she's weird. like uh, the chef on Enterprise. You never you never see her. Except the one episode. We only see the one episode. Susie Pla- who, and Susie Plaxon uh, yeah. played her. Who Great also actress. Played Kilar and Kilar. a lot of other, many other uh, times she's been on Star Trek. But what I liked about the episode is that, you know, you have that, like you said, you had that great moment in Sick Bay which is is comical because of course it's Barkley and then you go to to uh, you switch to data and Barkley with the cat with spot and you know the pairing of data and Barkley was something that I I found amusing because I don't think you know I, I the fact that data asked Barkley you know not Jordy not anybody else and data make you know says that it's spot seems to only like Barkley. I thought that was a wonderful little character bet there. I, I think that's hilarious that out of the entire damn ship, Spot likes Barkley the best. Barkley. And so Data... I also, it, lo- I also just love the choice of how to portray the two of them. Like, there were, t- there were two moments that were extremely intimate in, in the way that they were shot, framed, and performed. The one is, like, Barkley's holding Spot, and Data gets, like, right in front of Barkley like they're like this and uh-huh. is also petting Spock and then Barkley breaks away and it's just like a very interesting there's not any I don't think that like I'm not trying to I, I don't want to like turn this into like oh is there like uh, you know a sexual element or like a you know like or something like that that's not what I'm trying to get at I just uh-huh. love from a choreography perspective from an yeah. intimacy perspective like the way it was shot and filmed and like designed was like really beautiful and then you have that moment when they're both looking at spot and data's like right upon yeah they're they're looking over me, the couch yeah or whatever and what it really reminds me of is like i don't know like a specific era of film but like i, I almost want to uh say any movie with cagney james cagney in it like a uh, screwball kind of com- yeah, a yeah. screwball kind of comedy style where like I think men were just a lot less like insecure about being on top of another man or like near another man or like, you know, mm-hmm. like in that intimate kind of way. And that's kind of how it felt to me. And I thought that was a beautiful um, way of doing that. And we never see that again. It's just like a singular moment that skates McFadden, I think a hundred percent giving us something very unique and beautiful in Star Trek. That's interesting. The, the way I interpreted that scene, and that, that scene, you know, I mean, that's why I brought it up. I thought that was a remarkable interaction between those two guys, between those two characters. What I saw it is, is two kids. You know, Barkley, in a way, is, is, is like a kid. You know, he, you know, uh, the thing in the hollow deck. Uh, you know, you can see kids doing that. And Data is like a kid in a lot of ways. Uh, you know, he goes to 
uh, the what the art class, and he, he makes clay. Uh, so when they were when but, they were ca- kind of looking down at the cat, it was kind of like two two best friends, two kids, kind of like oh yeah. I think yeah, I look at the cat. I you can know. relate more. I can't relate to the kid thing as much because I I get it. Like kids are a hundred percent intimate that, like that, but I like that it's adults being that way. And I think sure, it's intentionally, but but I also think it's intentionally something. I think it's meant. I don't know. I mean, we don't have Gates McFadden on. I wish we had Gates McFadden to ask some of these questions. But like to me, I felt like there was an intention of showing that like there can be this intimacy between grown men that you don't see. And for me, it stands out because I don't see it often. Like just like mm-hmm. a casual intimacy of like what you said kids do kids come up to you and like put right their arms just hang you, out like, and, yeah. or just hang out or just yeah. like, you know put their arms around you or hug or whatever right. like i get where right. you're coming from but i think it's yeah they're very relaxed a relaxed know. that's the right. that's the word i was right. trying to think of like it, uninsecure yeah. if you will uninhibited right like, yeah you know, right but very know. relaxed and it's yeah. not something that we had seen it's not something i had even thought about with Data and Berkeley, like I thought, wow, this is cool, you know. Uh, so you had that; they had that inter, you know, you had that 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 chemistry there, and then uh, and like I said later and on, then, I thought it was sorry, interesting that we, you just reminded me we're hopping ahead. all over the place, but you just reminded me that going back to the Worf torpedo scene. That was a great scene too, because Worf is so fr- he's transforming. First of all, he's one of the first to be affected by this thing, right? So he's starting to get irritable and stuff. But Picard really kind of like, <laughs> he's just like, that's he's like yeah. some kind of, that was a dressing down, basically. He's just kind of like, okay, Mr. Wolf. Riker kind of yeah. started it, though. <laughs> yes, it's true. And I, I think Riker started it because, you know, I think Riker at that point probably is like, are, are you, are you, you and Troy, are you stepping into <laughs> Imzadi territory here? And I think Riker is somehow... <laughs> You know, it's it's, it's coming wow. out, yeah, uh, and that's how I, but, I saw it. Um, but definitely, definitely the point. Yeah. The point is, is that all that's jammed naturally into that scene too. It just didn't feel over like over. No. It felt perfect for no. like that scene, it just did. like the other thing felt perfect for the Barkley data scene. And I love the pairing offs and the and the you know the sectioning off but it all like is telling the same story because throughout yeah. these little vignettes if you or hops or whatever everyone's reacting to they're showing their they're showing their like the starts of their de-evolution you know mm-hmm. what i mean yes like, Riker's yes. starting to slow in his decision making you know and so on and so forth and Picard that was and, cool you know, i like that exit just in time right yeah and it's like as we're hopping around uh throughout the different people I, I really like, you know, it was it was very humorous, you know, the the beginning, you know, of course, Worf picking out uh, Troy, you know, uh, with the caviar. So it, like you said, it, you, you think, oh, this episode's going to go this way, and you think, oh, is it going to be comedic? Because you, there is some some comedy happening, and and uh, you know, Riker is is getting you know slower. Uh, I have to admit, Jordy. I mean, Jordy was was feeling tired in the um, in the crawl space, but but he seemed to be pretty on top almost till the yeah, end. Did you notice that? Much like much like COVID nineteen, this thing was affecting people differently in different no ways. Yeah, different and ways we never yet. saw like, what happened. Not to, to Jordy. like trivialize COVID nineteen, guys. I'm sorry. No, that no, no. Of course living, not. We are living through COVID nineteen, right. so there's no other. Thing right, to do but course. talk about it like you got yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you have no, to no. make it <laughs> of course but I, I thought it was interesting you know Riker you know <laughs> you know he, he he was relying a lot on Jordy in this episode because Jordy seemed to be the last one. Oh yeah he kept handing you know. off the decisions to Jordy you're right yeah Jordy, and then Jordy Jordy nurse Ogawa with the it. with the, the the hand the putting the knuckles on the oh and Riker did that too in engineering where he like kind of leans remember? on they're because they're both evolving into early human hominids or whatever and, you know like right what, you know like they're devolving they're devolving like pretty much how you would expect even though it's not necessarily the way you're gonna devolve but eventually you turn into like a marmoset or like a, you know like something like a small mammal is what you're gonna. T- right into. right it's interesting like i i i didn't have time to look it up but i would love to know how 
the writers came up with like spot devolving into an iguana was that just a gag or is there like a scientific like connection between oh. felines and and you know um, reptiles that i'd like to know i think it was a gag I ha- my it suspicion tells me it was a gag, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'd, I'd have to look it up. Um, as as I'm grabbing the the book to see if it says anything. Oh yay, Larry Nemechek. Mister Nemechek. Um, I, I will say <laughs> Which, that. Which, by the uh, way, tomorrow, since since uh-oh. this episode may go up today, Trekland Tuesday on Facebook, Larry Nemechek. Go check it out. Oh, Trekland yes. Tuesday. Tr- especially if you are home right now and don't have to do anything at that hour. He does it like in the early afternoon, I think. So Trekland Tuesday is the thing to check out. We That's long overdue plug for Mr. Nemechek. We read from his book all the time and we never really plug him. We're bad. We're, such, we're so terrible on Star Trek Boy. <laughs> Brandon Braga uh, wrote it. Yes, I saw and, that. And, uh, yeah. That's all you got to say? I'm reading. Are you you s- want me to just read it verbatim? Scre- you got to read. Are you screaming? Okay, I'll read it verbatim. From Josh okay. Chapman? <laughs> are you traumatized from Josh no. Chapman? No. Are you afraid that Larry Nevichek uh, no, is going to say No, I just, thing? okay, I'll, I'll just. <laughs> you have to read it's it. It's a lot. <laughs> He actually no writes dead air, doctor. What did, did you learn anything from China on WTM? No dead air, doctor. No oh, dead air. China. Mm. <laughs> Let me read to you in China's voice. <laughs> no, because he, 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 you know, uh, I have to tell you, he, you know, some episodes he just writes like a, a few token paragraphs, but he's he's got quite. He's got two pages on this one, oh, so wow. that's why I'm like. I can't read the whole thing. I'm just oh, trying to. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, I'm just trying to see if I can. If I can. Um, well, we already know it took seven days to make this episode, to film it. Right. Right. I'm just trying to see what uh, what it says about the writing, which was the. Oh, here we go. Braga had the idea of de-evolving the crew as far back as season four. But Rick Berman had objected to it until a plausible scientific explanation could be devised. Science Ooh. advisor Andre Barmans noted the reality of... What an interesting in, showrunner. <laughs> let's see. Noted... Huh? I said what an interesting showrunner Berman was where he's like, You're, I'm not going to let you do it until you can prove it, make it sound, <laughs> like make it make sense through science. It's interesting. Well, I mean, that's what Star Trek's known for, right? It is. It's true. I, I mean, <laughs> at least back then. I don't know about now, but um, it is. It continues to ooh, be. Ooh, ooh, was that a was that a shot across the bow? Maybe. Star Trek continues, Doctor. Star Trek continues. You remember that one? If you're old enough, you know what that means too. Yeah. yeah exactly. Star Trek continues, sir. <laughs> And not, I'm not even talking about the show on YouTube. <laughs> I'm talking about the slogan that was like a rallying cry in the 80s. Star Trek continues. Yes, I, I am aware. I was there. I was there. <laughs> Just saying. Science advisor Andre Barman <laughs> noted the reality of introns among many other types of dormant genetic material, but said the non- factual shock of the rapid body changes might be chalked up to it being an alien virus even so makeup designer michael westmore said a reversal sequence was readied for ugawa's simian but never applied or shot oh so they were going to de-evolve her on on camera it would have been really cool you could do it today with cgi very easily just two shots Braga, f- Braga finished his teleplay two weeks early to give the makeup team more lead time for the enormous amount of research nice, and design needed. The holiday break nice also... What a nice guy. Yeah, right? What a nice guy. Wow. What a nice guy, that Braga. Wow. The holiday break helped, too? Gates, Isn't that crazy? Uh, they had holiday breaks on shows. I forgot about the holiday breaks. Do we still do that? 
is that still a thing? Anyways, you were gonna say something about Gates McFadden, and I interrupted. No, you. no, it's all no. You know what, folks? You just gotta buy the book. This is the book. Larry which you Nemesite, can buy. Which you can buy, you can buy online. It online or through I would do it through Larry Nemechek's website. Um, oh, that's that's even better. Yep. And uh, I'm sure it's digital, correct? So you can get oh, it right away. It? I, I need yeah, to do I'm that. Sure. I need I to know, do it's that. It's probably like, a right PDF. Now. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, um, well, what I was gonna say is, is I really appreciated. You know, just the, I think all the actors really gave it their all in terms of, of the transformation. And then, you know, it's it the show is almost it, it, it has two halves. It has the early half where it's it's a bit comical and. And you really don't quite understand what's going on. And then Picard and Data go off on the shuttle craft, which in itself is is amusing because it reminded, it kind of called to mind the the scene uh, at Nemesis, where Picard is is aching to give right. the, you know, and it's or like that you know, scene calls, that scene recalls this actually, or that scene yeah. recall yes, cur- yeah, you're correct, yeah, timey wimey. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so, I mean, it shows that Picard has those tendencies, Chops. you know. Yeah. Well, and the whole chase and, scene where he, I, we haven't even gotten to that part yet, but uh, the 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 plan is to lure Worf away from sickbay to give Data enough time to synthesize a, uh, a cure. So they realize that Worf is probably tuned into Counselor Troy's pheromones, so they extract her pheromones into another hypospray. And then da- originally Data was going to lure Worf away because it makes sense because Data could just probably knock him out if things get really bad. I mean, like that's you know, actually true. Like, yeah, right. So that, but but Picard is useless. He can't do anything. Like, you know, but, so you need one needs to go and the other needs to stay. And Picard yeah. makes the right decision. He's like, no, Mister Data. Very brave. I'll, very brave. very brave but that's what the captain has to do like that's right. the, the, you know he's like even if he dies at least data has enough time to cure the rest of the the crew but he chases uh, that's another great scene like w- really dark like but done really well like and the fear on patrick Stewart face Stewart's face and also you do see him de-evolving into an a, like a mammalian proto human throughout this whole thing too and he's doing a bang up job at it as well like he's very convincing in his movements and what is that called uh gestalt acting no i don't know it's, i just made that up <laughs> but you know what i'm talking well, about well, like, vocally like, like, i noticed that and he, vocally he, yeah he was speaking faster uh well he, he was, was showing anxiety he was yes. like because like you know those animals are fe- they're like tuned into fear when you're getting into that part of your yourself you know this is like a it's so lush as we used oh. to say, he was the, the scenery was being like chewed magnificently, <laughs> you know, like uh, by all of them. But Patrick Stewart takes the cake and he's running away from Worf, and it's a brilliant scene because he has to like figure shit out. He goes into the you know well directed action packed scene where he goes in and he he, has, he figures out okay, I'll put this plate here to shield myself and I'll electrocute um, the rest of the Jeffries tube, and it will hopefully knock him out, and it works. It, it it does the trick, it knocks Worf out, and then Picard just like has to wait until you know the the situation uh, writes itself. It was good, really good. Yeah. I I the fact that I get excited even just talking about the scene to me after all these years like that's yeah. that's pretty impressive. And again, I ask, why did you why didn't you do any more? <laughs> like you should have done more. There was oh, D- Deep Space Nine I Voyager. Know. I'm sure. I- I'd love to know I the know. story. Maybe it's too personal. I would I don't like know to if we know. should delve in there. Yeah. I don't know. You were so I mean, great. It's, it's, you are so. It great. sounds like she had a, <laughs> a wonderful experience on it. it. Sounds like she had a wonderful yeah. experience on it. And uh, uh, God, I was going to say. Um, no, I, you know, I, I want to echo what you, what you were saying about the, uh, the, the ending. You know, Picard leading uh, Worf away, and 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 Data uh, was in sick bay and all that stuff. That that whole that whole sequence, the way it was shot, was great. And and you you know, there was great. You know, there, there, there was horror. You know, it, it was it was it was a it nice was little. Tense. It was there was tense, tense. There was terror. Yeah. Tension the, and terror. Even, there's some again, jump. knowing, 
knowing what happens, I still get caught up in the chase, if you will. Yeah, there were two jump scare moments that caught me. Because I hadn't seen this episode, obviously, in a really long time. And I'd forgotten that... I think the two best jump scares were was when, when Worf spit out the venom at Crusher... I'd forgotten that happened. Say, yeah. So, I mean, you see Crusher's skull, like, like yeah, oh, and you're like, holy shit, you what just happened? You might have forgotten it because it's so effective at being traumatic that you're like, ah, I can't think of it. <laughs> well, no, I, your I mind haven't is seen like... this. I haven't seen this as a long <laughs> well, time. Well, yeah, so. that too. Me, same here on that. On that. <laughs> and and the other one is uh, is obviously Barkley, the, <laughs> the famous, like, you know, bunk. You know, against the glass, and Picard freaks out. I, that scene is, is fabulous. The, the makeup on Barkley is is just just phenomenal. I mean, uh, this is this is great. And, and Troy turning into the amphibian. Um, you know, that's one that you you actually get some real time to look at. Uh, and, yeah. and 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 her performance. She was going, very good, by yeah, the way, as an yeah. amphibian. She really well, got all into their it. little quirk and all their little quirks, like her drinking like so much water and wanting like sea yeah. thing, like salt stuff, and it was like just yeah, yeah. it was just so well, cra- beautifully. Cra- Riker attacking Picard. Jumping on him I mean, and the that's, uh, right, that's right, you know, from they have the, to like phaser. Yeah. That's right, Data had to phaser him. I totally forgot about yeah, that. That's when yeah. Picard walks yeah. in on him. I trying mean, to there's eat a lot in this episode, <laughs> and if if there's any if there's any criticism I have, and and I, and I think she addressed it herself. The two parter. It should have been a two parter. Ideally, it should have been a two parter. And and to be fair, I think the whole. I mean, if, if we're okay, how many people are on the ship? Yes, a thousand plus. It's a, they say it. It's okay, like over a, uh, more than a, a thousand, thousand plus men, women, and children. And Not just Starfleet officers, gender, and, but f- and right genders of all kinds. Of right? course, right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is that and families. You know, not just people who work for, but non-commissioned. There must have been a lot of carnage. There was probably that like, is <laughs> a lot. That is an extremely traumatic event. It's true. And I'm thinking to myself, holy The recovery sh- would have been interesting. No, it's true. The recovery... Which Troy makes a joke awful. about at the end, which which it's the funny oh, joke. Oh, clearing her... Oh, for, I forgot that it's a good joke. Clearing her calendar. Because for three Barclay, weeks, she says, I, or something like, like that. She's like... Because she's like, Dr. Crush is like, well... He he now has this thing named he he has this thing named after him and something else I forget what yeah it he was. turned into a spider and he gets a disease oh, yeah, named, after it, named after him named after him she's like yeah, I better yeah. clear, clear my calendar for the next three weeks that was a great gag it's true that's a great gag and which kind of brings you back where, to oh, the I wanted to, the to humor. say that's what reminded me of the original series in a weird way about this it, episode. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. is because they always yeah. found a way and I think TNG does it a lot. But not often, as often as I remember. We'll, we're about to do our TOS rewatch in a you know in a matter of weeks, so who knows? But <laughs> wow, we'll weeks. discover. When we oh do my that. gosh! It's weeks away, Doctor. We're on the last. We're at the <sighs> final countdown. countdown. This is episode nineteen. <laughs> 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 oh, we're gonna invite Europe countdown. to. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'm going to do my best in the time of COVID. I had different plans for all good things, but audience, I'm going to do my best to do a version of that grandeur in the time of COVID-19 because I think we'll, we just, the show must go on uh, to reference another song (laughs) and we can't wait. We cannot wait. We have to get it, get through. We've come this far, this journey, and it's got to (laughs) go. It's got to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Um, Yeah. Are we ready to? I mean, I could go on. I, I, I think we all know where I'm, where I'm do heading. We, do we but... want to cool it on Joshua Chapman? Do we want to give Joshua Chapman a rest? Can Ooh. should we or should we? <laughs> what do you think? I'm gonna pick it up. Do we? Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna show it. We've we've been traumatized from. But from... before we we go to Joshua Chapman, I do say yes. A two parter where some of the recovery is address would have been very interesting and cool to see. Joshua Chapman, what do you say about this? Oh, you know what? He says nothing. Oh, you know why? Because we don't see 
um, we don't actually see another alien. We just see. Oh, the crew. we just get right. So he. He so he keeping to his yeah, yeah. I'm gonna He's go to the end. True to his true to form, Joshua Chapman. Good. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, mm -hmm. I'll go. I'll go first, Doctor. In in our in our manner that we established on Starfleet Boy, uh, and I just can't help myself. It's a ten. It's a ten. It's a ten. <laughs> it's a ten. I can't, I can't fault it. It's just such an enjoyable episode. It works. It gets better with age, which is not often that a, an episode does. I, I'm paying more attention to it now, obviously for obvious reasons, but also because it just it it, it evolved. It didn't de-evolve. It evolved. It, it was right. a really, it's a really good episode. Right. So, a ten, it gets, it goes into my timeless capsule. <laughs> <laughs> It goes I, into I, the capsule of necessary episodes. <laughs> this, I, this is one of my personal points. favorite episodes, I have to admit. I've always loved it. Um, I'm not going to give it a 10. Because I, I do think the ending just, you know, they kind of... Uh, I don't know. I, that ending... So much happens. You can't... It's, it's so much. Ha so I, ha I have I to give it a... This uh -huh. I always make this argument... Next Generation should get some sort of dispensation just because the nature of the times. Like, you have to take into context that it was not as easy to do serialized stories in, a, in an episodic only landscape, you know, for television until its, its sister show comes out. You know, and starts doing it more, but mm. I don't know. I think it's. I think you have to give a dispensation there. But anyways, I'm curious what your rating is. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm going to give it a nine. I think this is the only yeah. nine I've ever given on on uh, on Starfleet Boy. Uh, uh, because I, no. I, I the ending is no. I don't think I. I don't give up many nines. No, but you have given. You're saying have I? The only yeah. Oh, I I'm, think this might be my database. First nine. Uh, database boy, uh, please. <laughs> Please get me my reference. I need it. Database boy <laughs> to the bridge, please. Um, database, database for report to the bridge. Thank you. We'll find out. Uh, anyways, I I really admire the ambition of this episode. Um, you know, I'll, I'll compare it to the last ten that I gave, which was masks. Uh, which which was also an extremely ambitious episode. And somehow the ending of that one, and even though that's another one that got wrapped up pretty quick, it it seemed to just flow better. I think this one there's a lot there's a lot of trauma in this that you know you can't help but think about. I mean, like you said, the guy that was just murdered and and the ship is wrecked. I mean, it's 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 not so you gotta you gotta spend months fixing that ship, man. Anyways, I, I give it a nine, but I give it with a lot of love because I do love the ambition of the episode. I love the 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 story. I love Kate McFadden's um, dire direction. I love the makeup effects. I love the story. I love I just about everything about it except I just wish somehow something could have been done to tweak that ending. I don't know what you could have done, but it's a nine for me, and I I, I feel bad, but it's a nine. Listen here, Doctor. First of all, as I think, I think it's okay to to not give this episode a ten. I don't mean to shame you, rating shaming here, Doctor. It's okay, uh, but I do, I do want to uh, end our program by saying that yeah, like for first and only direction attempt, it still intrigues me yeah. to this day. That uh, and and I was very surprised to learn. That there weren't other shows because you uh, pulled off a really big one, uh, Miss McFadden. I don't think she likes to be called Gates, but you pulled it off and we loved it. So cheers to that. And uh, on that note, Doctor, it is late. It is. <laughs> the it's hour grows midnight. late. Yeah, it's almost the witching <laughs> do we hour. Hear, do we hear the chimes, Doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Cry havoc and oh, let's slip the dogs of war. When are you gonna do Star Trek Six, Doctor? I petition you here on on uh, to the oh. public, <laughs> Doctor. Oh, we, we await Star Trek Six. We I have my uniform we'll, we'll do it. We're gonna by. do it. 
We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it if not next this this weekend, next weekend. Ooh. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. Uh, audience, thank you for if you made it this far. Thank you for uh, coming along this journey first. We've been doing these nice little tight under an hour pops we're on fire it's like the old days when we first started i know well it's all coming <laughs> full circle full circle it, it truly is um audience if you made it this far we'd love to know what you think of this episode and um we'd love to hear your thoughts about what we thought as well our discussion here uh and we look forward to uh seeing you next time so live long and prosper make it so <laughs> Engage. <laughs> Engage. <laughs>